In October 1799, at the old toll booth in Perth, a lunatic prisoner died. He was Angus MacDonald and had carried out a series of attacks that were likened to those perpetrated on the streets of Whitechapel in London in 1888. The maniac of Bridalbin never seriously physically hurt any of the women, although he did frighten them half to death. Little was known about MacDonald's humble beginnings, but when he reached adulthood, he appeared in the area of Bridalbin and was described as a homeless, friendless and half-witted wanderer. When asked about his origins, he evaded the question. Perhaps he simply didn't know, or maybe he wanted to leave his past behind him. He would roam the areas in and around Loch Tay, doing odd labouring jobs, and when out of work would beg, sleeping anywhere he could, including under bushes of broom or in byres and barns. Although he was simple, he seemed to be good-natured, quiet and easily pleased, and when times were good for him, he was happy. At one point, MacDonald fell in love with a young woman while he was employed in the harvest at one of the local farm tunes or farm towns. She was working as a servant there. Although Kirsty didn't reciprocate, she encouraged his advances and this resulted in a proposal that they should marry that coming Martinmas, traditionally 11th November, when hiring and firing would occur and accounts were paid and closed. By then she would have her half-year's penny fee to add to her savings in the nuke of her kist, and he, meantime, would work like a horse at whatever job was offered to him and put aside any spare farthing he earned. They would get a cotter's house and a cow and begin a new life together. Kirsty listened to all this when he told her his plans behind a peat stack one dusky evening, and she blushingly whispered what seemed to be consent. MacDonald was now the happiest man alive. On leaving the peat stack, he resolved to do as he'd promised. But of course, Kirsty had no intention of marrying him. The weeks passed by, and he soon learned that Kirsty had been married to a cousin and had gone to America, where her brothers were living, and his dream was shattered. He was deeply upset, and at this point swore revenge. But how could he have revenge on Kirsty, as she was now overseas? In his mind, the whole of the fairer sex was fair game, for their false promises. Soon he began attacking women who were on their own, intending to murder them. However, it appeared that he never inflicted any wounds on his prey, as they either escaped by running off, or they beat him off, or someone heard their cries and came to their aid. He would go up to houses, knocking on the doors to see if there was any work or beg for bread, and always appeared humble and inoffensive. He was never accused of theft, as he knew right from wrong. Life went on. He lived his nomadic existence in the wilds of the Bredalban Hills and Glens, indulging in his homicidal propensity whenever the opportunity arose. Due to these incidents with women, the police were informed, but it was a vast area, and MacDonald was good at concealing himself from the authorities. However, eventually he was caught and brought down to the Perth toll booth, which sat at the foot of the High Street. He was tried before a sheriff who passed a sentence of perpetual banishment from Perthshire 
the usual sentence to rid the county of unwanted vagrants and unruly citizens. For a season, he wandered in other parts of the country, but ventured back to the Bredalban Highlands, where he once again began threatening women and scaring them half to death. In one instance, he nearly carried out his threat to the fool on a woman in woods near Taymouth. This resulted in the police looking for him once more. On 9th January 1799, William Ross, writer in Perth and Procurator Fiscal for Perthshire, wrote that a man named Angus MacDonald, a good deal deranged in his mind, has for some years past travelled through Bredalbyn and has often put women in fear by threatening to take away their lives by cutting their throats and has actually made several attempts. He went on to explain what happened in Taymouth. The wife of Duncan Dewar was on the main road, which ran through the wood, when MacDonald pulled her down and took out a small knife which he sharpened on his shoe. He then took a razor out of a parcel while he was holding her down with his knees and was just about to take it out when two men on horseback rode by, helped the woman and horsewhipped him. Ross went on that he was dangerous and that it was absolutely necessary that he was secured to prevent anything like this happening again, or indeed a fatality. A warrant was issued for the apprehension and imprisonment of MacDonald by the sheriff, but he eluded the authorities for quite some time. Mountains, glens, woods and moors were all searched, and eventually he was caught and imprisoned in the toll booth. Before he was brought to trial, MacDonald fell ill and on 12th October died. Bredalbin could breathe a sigh of relief that women were no longer threatened by the maniac in their region. If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.